Well, our scripture reading today is from the Apostle Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And uh, this is one of the many portions in scripture where it highlights that God is there to heal our wounds and minister to us during the darkest moments in our lives. We read beginning in chapter 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. And I'll invite Tasha to come forward at this time. Tasha. Okay, good morning. Um, I will start by saying um, we thank you for all that we're observing from our military um, on this day. But the observation of Memorial Day was started in the country in remembrance of those who died in wars between states. Since that time, those that have sacrificed their lives in service of our nation have gone unnoticed. Um, since 9-11, there has been a lot of more mention of those who died in line of duty, whether it be uh, military, it will be fire, rescue, police, medical personnel. We've had a lot of people that have went and served and done minor things that have gone unnoticed, um, but we always will thank them for their service, big or small. Um, from my own point of view, these additions have been good in harmony and the, the original purpose of setting aside the, this day to remember. I am glad that all of you have joined us today for our special service of remembrance for those who have given their lives and sake for others. I also hope that you will take part in one of the local silver ceremonies that will occur today, tomorrow, or in the next couple days. Um, setting aside days or objects in remembrance are nothing new. There are many of them in both Hebrew and Greek, Greek scriptures for a variety of particular purposes. For example, in Genesis chapter 9, verse 8 through 17, God established that the rainbow, the rainbow as a sign of his covenant with Noah and that he would not flood the earth again to destroy all flesh. It was also a reminder of both God's judgment in the past and his promise for the future. In Exodus chapter 12 and 13, the Lord brings about his last plague upon Egypt, which resulted in, in Pharaoh finally releasing the children of Israel from their enslavement. The firstborn would be killed unless the blood of a lamb was spread on the doorsteps and lentil across the, the angel of death would pass over the house. The Lord then established the feast of Passover as a yearly reminder of this event and freedom resulted from it. Joshua chapter 3 also records that the miraculous crossing of the Jordan River on dry ground. God directed that the Levites to carry the Ark of the Covenant into the river, and as their feet touched the river, the water stopped flowing and the riverbed became dry. A man from which each tribe then collected a large stone from the middle of the riverbed, and those were stacked on the opposite side of the Jordan as a memorial. The, the purpose was specifically so that when future generations of children would ask about the stacked stones, the story of the crossing could be retold, and it could be an important part to remember their history. The book also records a plot of Haman, the high official in King Azra's court, to annihilate the Jews living in Persyria. The plot was reversed by the efforts of Queen Esther and the Feast of Purim, which was still celebrated this day and was established to remember the story. Graves were a common sign of a place of remembrance. We see them everywhere we go. Cemeteries, grave sites, memorials downtown. Um, we have the Washington Cemetery. They're everywhere. Um, they are still in many societies, and they're also a way to remember those sacrifices. Abraham established that the cave as the grave site for his family, and it became a place of memorial for him and his, his descendants. Jacob was too far away for the, from the family burial site when Rachel died, so he set up a pillar over her grave to mark it and cause her to be remembered. The kings of Judah that were good were buried in particular royal tombs in Jerusalem, where they were also remembered, while those that were evil were not. 
Memorials were not just prompted by particular days or sites, but also were what written by King David wrote in Psalms 38 and chapter 70 for the express purpose of being a memorial for what God has done. The same is actually true of our society. There are particular days of remembrance, such as Memorial Day. These are particular sites of remembrance, such as ceremonies, battlefields, and museums. There are particular objects to cause remembrance, such as monuments and historical signs. And those are the songs, ballads, books, and poetry about that should be remembered. We also already have done so much this morning, just by the simple hymns that we have sung. In the New Testament, we find that a, cer- a central ceremony of worship is done as a memorial. In 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 11, Paul explains that the purpose and procedure of the Lord's Supper or communion. He explains its history and its meaning by citing Jesus' words concerning it. Jesus said that both the bread, which represented his body, and the cup, which represented his blood, were to be partaken in the remembrance of me. The ceremony of memorial is observed by his followers and proclamation of his death, even to this day. There are multiple reasons to set aside a day to remember those who have died. I've also pointed out a few of those. There is a national reason remembering the high cost of maintaining our political freedoms. This both honors those who have made ultimate sacrifices and helped encourage people to present, to be diligent to maintain these freedoms. Our men and women in uniform that have served have been great, given great respect and honor. And I should also point out that 40% of military deaths have been something other than direct battle. Those are those um, people that I feel have gone unnoticed or done little things that may not have been as big as other things. Regardless of the grand ideologies, concepts of freedom, or even threat to home and hearth, and general reasons for war, are are self-preservation and trying to protect your buddies that are on the line with you. Jesus himself commanded this type of sacrifice. In John chapter 15, verses 12 through 13, Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I loved you. Greater love is no one than this, the one lay down his life for his friends. The stories of those who have died demonstrating the kind of love abound. Those who have volunteered for dangerous assignments or have taken up the most dangerous positions to give their life and to a greater chance. We thank you. Those who have shielded others with their bodies as bullets flew and bombs went off. Those who have charged at enemies to try to protect their friends by eliminating anything that may get in their way. We thank you. Those who have demonstrated a greater concern for those who love their own over their own life. We thank you. There are many of those who are here today only because someone else took the hit and paid the price instead of us. It is, very, it is this very reason that causes the vast majority of those who have done heroic deeds and sur- survived to downplay it, but to make it something grand. Um, they were only doing what they were called to do. They were only doing what their heart told them to do. The value of human life is so high and the value of others can only be compared to it in hence Jesus' statement. The great value of a friend is demonstrated when one yields his own life to extend the life of a friend and such action is only generated out of love. What is the response of someone who has laid down their life for them? What do you think of? What comes to your mind? Mine is extreme gratitude. I'm thankful for everyone who has been in my life who has sacrificed before I was born and even to this day. That is what Memorial Day has always been, such an important holiday among veterans and especially those who have served front lines. Many of them personally know the price someone else has paid that has allowed them to live. They desire to be remembered and honored as those who have gone before them, and this morning is our job to to honor and remember them. As a country member and are grateful for those precious freedoms that we have enjoyed over the course of the country's history. Me personally, I don't know, I've only learned history of wars that have been more dangerous before me, but as my age, I've been and seen some of those on TV and they've not been pleasant. As a society, we remember and are grateful for those lives that have been able to live in safe conditions for us. We thank you. As a nation, we remember and are grateful for the harmony that we can have with with other nations, and because of them, we we ourselves and our future generations will be able to try to live in harmony and be safe. As individuals, we remember and honor family members, friends, and loved ones, and buddies who have who have been killed, not in our nation's military actions, but in emergency responders. I ask that you do not forget them and keep honoring them every day. As a great love as it is for a man to lay down his life for his friends, there is one per- person that has demonstrated a greater love, and that's Jesus. 
Jesus continued in John chapter 15, verses 14 through 17, telling his disciples, No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You do not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask from the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command that you give one another. This statement itself is wondrous since Jesus, the Son of God, is saying to his disciples who are mere humans. Jesus came to earth and became friends with humans and promised to reveal God the Father to them. Perhaps we can understand Jesus dying on behalf of his disciples since they were his friends and for that would parallel which would have been seen in lives of men who have died trying to protect their lives of their family and friends. However, Jesus' love went beyond this. In Romans chapter 5, verse 7, the Apostle Paul stated, For one willing hardly die for the righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare to even die. That would seem to be a slightly higher level of sacrifice and love, and yet something humans have demonstrated in rare incidences of being very capable of doing. This is the theme of Charles Dickinson's in A Tale of Two Cities. Can there be any greater love than a man laying down his life for friends and someone dying in the place of a good man? Yet, but no one more human would do so, such as God in human flesh. Paul states that in Romans chapter 5, he demonstrated his love in which we were sinners and he still died for us. Earlier I asked, what, or I stated, what was the response would be if someone laid down their life for you? What were the thoughts in your head when you heard me ask that or say that statement? How much more than this same response towards Jesus laid down his own life for us? You were a sinner and, it, and, and admitting all your sins to him. A Christian strives to live a life of holiness out of honor and respect for Jesus who died for him as well as the consequence to those truths that become with believing in him. Today and tomorrow, we give special recognition to those who have died for the cause of freedom or in the effort to protect others. What they have done is noble and should be remembered and honored, and we, have, and we who have received the benefits of their sacrifice should be thankful. We also have to remember that there are still men and women serving to this day. We ask that we send prayers and blessings to them, and that God protects them and puts his blessings over them as they are away from their family and friends today. Um, if, you didn't, if, if anything, I recall that you remember those in your family and friends that have sacrificed for you, and always be thankful. Now I'm going to take a moment to say a quick prayer. Will you bow your heads for me? Dear God, we thank you for the ultimate sacrifice you gave for us. We also thank you that you constantly point out to us all the sacrifices you gave for us, for our freedom, and for us to internally be with you and believe in you every single day. We ask that you watch over our family and friends, our wounded heroes here and afar, that they are protected and that they, know that they are loved and blessed by your body and your spirit. We thank you for, yet again, showing us every single day while we're here. And we're thankful that we have the moment to take a breath and take a moment of silence to honor those and always send our thanks and blessings to them. We ask that you keep everyone careful and safe and blessed. In your name we pray. Amen.